What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today I found out some news. Uh, it is classified as a rumor though, so there is a possibility that this is not true, but if it is, I will be so, so grateful. Now, word on the street is that George Lucas is has been brought in by Disney to help J.J. Abrams with Episode 9. Now, J.J. Abrams needs all the help he can get because J.J. is the kind of guy, he makes everything look pretty, and it's like, it's pretty, but there's no depth to it. And that that's kind of the way I classify J.J. Abrams movies. Now... I mean, that that's, I feel like I also do have a little bit of bias because I just, yeah, I just, I think that that's basically the way you describe J.J. His movies look good, no depth to it at all. And uh, he has a tendency to copy things, so he, he uses nostalgia to get people into the theater and then he makes everything look cool. That That's J.J. for you in a nutshell. Now, George Lucas is the man that created Star Wars. Yes, when he did the prequels, he was surrounded by a lot of people that are just like, yeah, yeah, you know, George, do it, you know, make more Star Wars, and they weren't really thinking about, hey, George, that might not be the best idea, and you might not want to have this guy, you know, talking about sand for, you know, a while, and they're, they're like, that's his big way on how he hits on a girl, but George is like, well, that's something I would say, so I'm gonna leave it in there, and it's like, oh, okay, alright, well, George, you're, you're a very, uh, amazing anomaly, I, I'm very grateful that people like you exist, because you created Star Wars, so, I remember when Solo was coming out, and they were talking about how George Lucas came to visit the set, because, you know, him and Ron Howard are very good friends, uh, George had Ron Howard come in in American Graffiti, and, so you know, they've been really good friends since, you know, almost the beginning of Ron Howard's career, and so when George came to, you know, visit Ron and, like, see what he was doing, I remember them describing how when he's watching, like, Han Solo put on, like, one of Lando's like capes and then put it on hair. He's like, no, that that's not what Han Solo would do. And he just like showed him and they're like, wow, like he became Han Solo for a minute. They're like, he showed them the way Han Solo would be. And he's like, Han Solo wouldn't do that. He would do this kind of thing. And I think that would be so smart of them if they d if they were bringing George Lucas in, if this rumor was true, and George is coming back to help them, and y because obviously they've gone astray, just look at Luke Skywalker, look at what Ryan Johnson did to Luke Skywalker, that is not Luke Skywalker, that is not the man that changed the world. That guy is Jake Skywalker. And you can even see in the interviews of Mark Hamill how he was just completely, you know, distraught and destroyed by the destruction of this character that he played. And it breaks your heart because Luke is the one that gave us hope. Luke is the one that looked in the face of evil and said, I will not turn to the dark side. I will not kill my father and I would rather die than ever hurt my father. But no, Ryan Johnson's idea is like, oh... He saw his nephew was having a bad dream, so he decided to kill him. That is not Luke Skywalker! Luke Skywalker would never do that. If you ever watched Star Wars, you would know that! But apparently they think it's okay to bring in these idiots that have never seen Star Wars and try to do this movie and, you know, push their identity politics in. And that's why The Last Jedi is the biggest shit show that's ever hit the big screen. And so, bringing George Lucas in to help them and say, Hey guys, apparently none of you have watched my freaking movies, none of you guys understand Luke Skywalker, let me explain to you, because apparently it's a mind-bottling thing. Like, apparently nobody can understand this character that's working on the movies. Heck, you can come here on YouTube and watch Thousands of YouTubers talk just about how much The Last Jedi destroyed Luke Skywalker and explain why his character is so inconsistent. So, bringing George in would really help them out a lot because apparently the people that are running Star Wars, all they care about is pushing their agenda and they don't care about Star Wars, but that is one of the biggest flaws that they have. If you don't care about something but yet you're trying to market it to people and you get mad at people because we don't buy it, because we don't want it, it's because you took something that we cared about, that we loved, that changed the world. And you're like, okay, let's half-ass this, let's just kind of throw some stuff, let's throw in all of this garbage that was never in Star Wars, and then let's, you know, put the Star Wars name on it and let's market it to people. No, we're, n we're not going to buy it, we're not going to be fooled by that. We know who Luke Skywalker is, we know who Han Solo is, and we know who Princess Leia is. That was not them. 
not even close. So bringing in George Lucas would be the most helpful thing to you right now, Disney, because apparently no one that you have working for you understands these characters. So you need to bring in the man that created them so he can, you know, give you some lessons on character development, on Acting, apparently, on, you know, just script writing. And that's not even George Lucas's strong suit. But the fact that you need to bring him in to save your ass just shows how much you fucked up with Ryan Johnson. I do not think that this man deserves a trilogy. I feel like the only reason that they're, like, saying, oh, he's getting a trilogy. Oh, you know, we're starting production. This company in London is, you know, getting ready to work on Ryan Johnson's movie. I feel like they're gonna just really promote the Game of Thrones, guys trilogy and you know maybe just kind of oh like he's working on another movie right now kind of like the thing that happened with Kiri Hart you know she was supposed to take over after Kathleen Kennedy but then you know what all of a sudden now she's she's gone in a different direction she's gonna go be you know a creative consultant for tv shows instead of you know the head of the story group at Lucasfilm huge huge demotion uh they are just showing how much they do not understand the IP that they spent four billion dollars on and George Lucas, if this rumor is true and he's coming in to fix it, which I sincerely hope it is true because they need all the freaking help that they can get. And I already know George Lucas is not going to be happy with the treatment that they gave to Luke freaking Skywalker. But as much as I love George Lucas, as much as I have faith in him to, you know, help them try to get it right. I have a feeling he's going to tell them, hey guys, you shouldn't do that. You should do this. Like, this is Luke Skywalker. And they're going to be like, hmm, yeah, you know what? I don't like that. And do something else. And then they're going to blame it on George. They're going to say that, oh, if this movie fails, it's because George gave us the wrong advice. I feel like that is might be, you know, the song that they play because everyone is so, you know, heartbroken by what happened to the last jedi i mean we got stabbed in the back and it went all the way through that's what the last jedi did to the fan base so bringing in george lucas it could help but i feel like any backlash they get they're going to turn it around on him and george lucas does not deserve that because george lucas did try with the prequels he might have you know had you know very different expectations than what we got but he told the story. He got from point A to point B. He showed the evolution of Anakin Skywalker into Darth Vader. He accomplished his story, and he showed it in a trilogy. And again, yes, it could have been done differently, but the way that he did it, as a kid, when I watched them in the theaters, I enjoyed them. There were parts that I was like, eh, you know, kind of stuff. Like, I loved Attack of the Clones as a kid. Now as an adult, I'm just like, there's some parts that are very cringeworthy. But still, that's Star Wars. That's Anakin Skywalker's story. And then it shows, you know, how it relates to the original trilogy. It didn't, you know, demolish the lore of Star Wars. It enhanced it. It introduced this whole new era. And people love that era. It gave us the Clone Wars TV show. I love that TV show. It's great. It gave us characters like Ahsoka. And, you know, just showing the whole dynamics between the clones and the Jedi. And so that way, when you watch, you know, Revenge of the Sith, it kills you to see what the clones are doing to the Jedi because you see how they're, you know, they're friends with the Jedi, how they all work together to, you know, help save the Republic from the Separatists. That's very powerful stuff. So once you're done with the Clone Wars TV show and you watch Revenge of the Sith, it cuts you so much deeper. And that is Star Wars. This sequel trilogy, let the past die. Let's, let's be JJ. Let's copy A New Hope and make it worse. Let's take something that was made in the 70s, make it with all the special effects, make it with all the monies, and make it worse. How does that happen? It's, it's JJ, so I shouldn't be asking that question. It's freaking JJ. And then you have Ryan Johnson, who has been caught on film saying that he loves it when he makes a movie that divides people, that half the people love it and half the people hate it. Why the hell would you hire someone like that? Why would you hire someone that's never seen Star Wars? I mean, I don't know why I should be asking that since I, obviously, Kathleen Kennedy has never seen Star Wars. They don't understand Luke Skywalker, which I'm, I, I know I've said that earlier in this video, but still, come on! Come on, this is not rocket science. This is Luke Skywalker. He's a good person. 
Anakin, no matter what happens, he is a Jedi. He went through hell to become a Jedi. And he faces the Emperor, and he, he's, he's not, he's not what we saw in The Last Jedi that wouldn't, Luke would never do that. Anyone that has seen the movies will know Luke would never do that. Come on. Bringing George Jin to tell you that is going to cost you a lot of money when, if you just go watch the movie, you'll learn that for yourself. But, you know, I just hope if this is true and George comes in and helps them, that he actually helps them and they actually listen to the man that created Star Wars. They need to listen to him, and if they do, this movie has a chance of succeeding. Again, I'm not a big J.J. Abrams fan, I, so, ugh. I just hope that this doesn't backfire and they don't try to blame it on George. Because George didn't write The Last Jedi. No, guess what? George made Star Wars. George made Empire Strikes Back. George made Return of the Jedi. That guy didn't make The Last Jedi. That guy didn't take something that the entire world loved and fuck it up and say F you if you don't like it. That's not what George Lucas did. So if they bring him in to help with this movie and it doesn't do what they wanted to do because they don't listen to him... I don't think that he deserves to be blamed for their ignorance, for their mistakes. And I have a feeling that it's either going to go one or two ways. Either George is going to help and they're going to say, and it, they're actually going to listen to him and it's going to work and it might salvage whatever nonsensical madness that this movie is going to be about. And then they say, oh yeah, like it was us, it was us. You guys didn't have faith in us. Oh yeah, and George helped a little bit. Or... It's not, they're not going to listen to him. He's going to be there saying, guys, you need to listen to me. And they're just going to be like, no, George, no, we're not going to listen to you. You want to do movies about like the wills and the whole like midichlorian things. We don't want to listen to that. And then they're not going to listen to George when he's like, I'm not even talking about that, guys. I'm talking about Luke Skywalker. And <laughs> they don't listen to him. Movie does what The Last Jedi did, and they're just like, oh, it's George's fault! George's fault! George gave us bad advice! We listen to him, and it's bad, and they have somebody to blame it on other than themselves. Because that's what Disney likes to do. They like to blame it on trolls. They like to blame it on Russian bots. They don't like to acknowledge their mistakes. So, if this is true, then George, I... I really wish you luck that you have to deal with these people. If it's not true, then I don't think there's any hope. But at least George gets saved from, you know, even further backlash and, you know, them trying to blame their failure on him. So everyone, I did link the article in the link below or in the description below. So if you want to go check that out, go ahead. And everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. And everyone, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you uh, want to, you know, see videos or get notifications of when I do videos and live streams, make sure you click that little bell because YouTube has a tendency to not give people notifications. That's why I always say in all my videos, make sure that bell is clicked. And everyone, have a great rest of your day, and may the force be with you, because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye. Hey everyone, after being asked for months now, I finally got a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. Box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799-8171. Thank you, have a great day, guys.